You're probably wondering why I'm wearing swimming goggles. And that's because I'm going to do something I never do. A cat size drill. And I'm going to try and do it in a TS515, which is really, really difficult to cut size. Then, the difficult bit is getting back in the boat. And I'm going to demonstrate to you how to do that. First of all, I need to get myself to a place where there's a little bit more space, a space for me to roll over without touching the bottom with the oars, which are quite long. Um, altogether about three metres long, so I need about three metres, possibly more depth, if I'm not going to come a cropper. So, first of all, I'm just familiarising myself with the buoyancy of the floats and how much of my weight they will support. Uh, I, I haven't done this before in this boat and uh, I want to know roughly when it's going to go. Um, I'm amazed actually how stable it is and how difficult it is to turn it over, even with a squared blade. Normally you would have a feather blade if you wanted to stay upright. Yes, I still can't get it over. Okay, what happens next? Well, before I tell you on this free YouTube video, I'm going to ask you to do me a favor. Scroll down to the bottom of the page on YouTube where this video is hosted and click on any, in fact, all of the links that I put in the description. And the reason I'm asking you to do this is because I've disappeared off the face of the planet since I moved my web hosting from the USA where I was having problems with time zones whenever anything went wrong it took ages to get fixed uh, I moved it to Central Europe where I am and now Google hasn't figured that out yet and so if I look for my websites or links to them uh, Google doesn't know they're there so you can help if you click on those links as many of them as you as you feel comfortable with They're only to ahoy boats and to skinning academy and so on so i i'll get by with a little help from my friends and i count you amongst them so please do me a favor click on the links and then we'll get back to the video it's got to go sometime i've got the the gunnel right down to the water's edge and there we go Hand up just to indicate that I'm alive and safe and well. And then it, it's a question of aligning the skulls so that they are parallel to the keel. It makes it much easier to tow if they're not across the boat, but parallel to the keel. And you can tow the boat whilst it's upside down, like this. You don't have to turn it the right way up if you're just going to swim to the shore with it. Another option is to sit on top of the boat and wait to be rescued. If I'm going to get in, then the boat needs to be the right way up. And it's perfectly acceptable, in fact it's very helpful, to stand on the rigger to help turn the boat over. And the next thing is to sort out the oars so that they are parallel to the keel. As before, when you're towing the boat upside down, it's just as important when it's the right way up. And then, getting back in. It's much easier to push the thin end of the boat down into the water than it is to try and push the middle down into the water and climb on board. But I think I missed a trick here. I probably could have done better by just sitting astride the boat rather than dragging myself along and kneeling. And of course, eventually, <laughs> I come to the shore. If this were for real, and I'd come, come to the shore, I'd just get out and, and uh, walk with the boat to a safe place. I don't want to fall in here next to these horrible rocks with a bit sharp and jagged, and I might have sea urchins on them. Now, if you don't know what a sea urchin is, 
then I recommend you find out before you go swimming in the sea. You might not actually cut size. And it's quite difficult to cut size this boat. And you could just fall out, as I deliberately did just then. And you end up with your feet in the boat still. Well, they're easy to take out of this boat, as you just saw. Then, of course, the first thing to do is to sort out the oars, as usual. Get them parallel to the boat. Remember that your boat is your life raft. And even if you can't get into it, never leave it. Stick with the boat because it's much more visible than you are. Your little head above the water is just like a football and it would never be spotted. So stay with the boat always and if you can, get back in, sit on top, whatever you have to do. I have to say that I found it much more difficult coming in over the side of the boat like this than I did coming in at the end. Uh, but having said that, in a, a fine boat, I usually come over the side. Uh, I don't think about coming over the end because the boat is so tippy it would, it would always be falling over. And uh, if I come in over the side I can keep the handles across the boat by joining them together, holding them with one hand and leaning just enough on the one that's on the water uh, with the other one in the air providing a bit of weight to help counterbalance the boat. Now this is an important thing to know. Uh, sometimes you can't reach the handle, as I couldn't in this case. Uh, but you can do this. Get hold of the other end and throw it. But it won't go across the water unless you've feathered it in the correct direction. Lifted up the leading edge, well, it normally would be the trailing edge of the oar, before you push it away. Okay, so when I'm getting it back into my fine boat, which I've had to do about half a dozen times in my life, and uh, it, it's not as wide as this, it doesn't have the stable line. And what I do is I hold the handles together and then I push in the middle of the boat and push down on the handle. It doesn't matter if one blade is in the air and the other one, as long as one is on the water, and you keep the boat balanced and you lift yourself into the middle of the boat. It's, uh, I've done it, I can say, about half a dozen times. And uh, I've always managed, whenever I've fallen in, which is very seldom, I've always managed to get back into the boat without any help. But probably a good idea to practice it. So if you fall in, the first thing to do is to sort out the oars so that they don't become a hindrance. And then you can tow the boat either swimming backwards like this, as though you were doing a um, life-saving routine, or you can turn around and swim forwards, which might be more effective. But always hold on to the boat, never lose control of it, never let it go. TS515, very easy to de-rig. Rigging and de-rigging can be done in a jiffy, much quicker than on conventional racing boats, especially the older ones which had nuts and bolts which you had to unscrew. Just emptying any water out from inside the cockpit of the boat, and now I'm going for a swim. So please remember to click on any links in the description that you see and this helps Google to discover my websites and it helps me in the, in the long run. So thank you very much for watching and I hope we'll meet on the circuit somewhere. Yeah.